A gas blast in Nigeria kills people lining up to refill cylinders for Christmas. In our Music Maker segment, up and coming Kenyan artist Eid Aziz, and highlights of Christmas celebrations from around the globe. Africa 54 starts right now. Is Africa 54. Uh, we begin uh, with uh, very unfortunate news on this Christmas Day. A massive explosion at a gas plant in southern Nigeria has killed tens of people, according to President Mohamedou Buhari's office. A local journalist on the scene says he saw nearly 100 charred bodies. Residents say the Christmas Eve blast occurred when a truck was discharging butane gas at a facility in Niwi town in Anambra state as a crowd of customers refilled gas canisters. Carl Ofonia, another journalist on the scene, says lots of people were in the building at the time of that explosion, primarily plant workers and people buying gas. And many of the wounded are being treated for burns at a nearby, nearby hospitals. But now to more uplifting news, Pope Francis delivered his Christmas message, uh, or Orbi et Orbi, to Vatican City and the World Friday at St. Peter's Square, hours after kicking off the celebrations of Jesus' birth with a Christmas Eve Mass at St. Peter's Basilica. In his homily, the Pope urged the listeners to place less emphasis on what he called society's intoxication with abundance and wealth. Noting the simplicity of Jesus' birth in his table, Francis said Jesus calls us to act soberly, showing mercy and compassion. In Australia, Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull is celebrating Christmas serving others. There, there is no better example uh, of, of love, of um, following in the footsteps of Jesus, in practical love, helping people who are struggling, who are battling for, for all sorts of reasons. In France, Christmas service and security concerns intersect following last month's terror attacks in Paris. It's a general state of mind with which we all try to cope with, with as much serenity and calm as possible. Meantime, back in Australia, where it is summer, beachgoers are taking to the joyous theme of the Christmas season. Well, U.S. President Barack Obama and First Lady Michelle Obama wished Americans a Merry Christmas on Friday during the President's weekly address, which was released one day early to mark the holiday. Today, like millions of Americans and Christians around the world, our family celebrates the birth of Jesus and the values he lived in his own life, treating one another with love and compassion, caring for those on society's margins, the sick and the hungry, the poor and the persecuted, the stranger in need of shelter, or simply an act of kindness. That's the spirit that binds us together, not just as Christians, but as Americans of all faiths. That's what the holidays are about, coming together as one American family to celebrate our blessings and the values we hold dear. During this season, we also honor all those who defend those values in our country's uniform. Every day, the brave men and women of our military serve to keep us safe, and so do their families. So as we sing carols and open presents, as we win snowball fights, or lose snowball fights, let's all take time to pay tribute to those who've given our country so much. Go to joiningforces.gov to see how you can serve the troops, veterans, and military families in your community. And together, we can show them just how grateful we are for their sacrifice. That's a tradition that we all can embrace today and every day. So on behalf of Malia, Sasha, Bo, Sonny, Grandma, and everyone here at the White House, Merry Christmas. May God bless our troops and their families, and may God bless you all with peace and joy in the year ahead. Well, now for all those celebrating Christmas, you probably cannot do it without tasty treats. Ginger cookies are the heart of Christmas baking, and one of the most popular traditions is using baked ginger bread to build a little house and decorate it with frosting, candy canes, chocolate, and gumdrops. Well, it is this time of year when gingerbread house competitions and exhibits are held in the U.S. and around the world. Here's Faith Lapidus with the yummy details. 
creativity, artistry, and passion are evident in each edible work of art. This season's theme focused on new ways of living, different ways to construct. It was inspired by rising global population densities and urbanization. How you can solve this problem, how you have to think about this theme in the way that architects and you know designers do. The judges were impressed with Louise Thornell's circular house, which had something for everyone, including a candy-filled swimming pool. It's a very loving concept, you can see, but also extremely well-baked and a very new, innovative way of using glazing and so on in the, in the bake. Since it began 25 years ago, the competition has drawn some of Sweden's most promising up-and-coming young creators. The gingerbread houses will be on display until January 10th. For writer Faiza El Masri, I'm Faith Lapidus, VOA News. Well, now today we bring part two, we bring you part two of an interview with Dr. Benjamin Ola Akande, the newest president of Westminster College in Fulton, Missouri, and the first African to lead the Liberal Arts College. He talks about tuition cost and affordability and the challenges of living in the United States. VOA's Marema Diallo has more with Dr. Akande. Let me touch on one more question about uh, Westminster. What is the tuition cost before I move on to other? Our, our tuition cost at Westminster is about $20,000. That's cool. um, And uh, we're, one of the things that we're very, um, very clear about is affordability. Um, close to 98% of our students are scholarship. Uh, and so we, we provide an opportunity for our students to, to be able to afford our education. Well, I wish I went to Westminster back in the days <laughs> when not, I came. The tuitions were... Still, still come for well, maybe I'll go for my PhD right, this time right. and I won't have to pay as much. <laughs> well, very quickly, uh, it's a long way from Nigeria and I just want to take you back to, first of all, ask you how long you've been uh, here and uh, do you remember the first day? I came to the U.S. on August the 24th, 1979. Wow, you remember and, uh, the exact exactly, day Exactly, exactly. <laughs> it was a Boeing 747 flight that came in from Lagos into JFK. And, and you know, as, as the plane uh, approached the tarmac, and what was interesting was I, I, I began to hum the song by Frank Sinatra, New York, New York. Remember that scum still in the news? I'm living today. And I well, want to be a part talents. of it. I mean, it was, it was, <laughs> I, was, I was thinking, okay, all that, all that music in which I was trying to put in place the description of this remarkable place called New York, but I was here. I was finally here, and um, that, was, that was a very unique experience for me. And, um, and, and then just landing and going through customs and, um, and, and all the pictures and all the movies and all the shows that I've seen about America sort of kind of came to fruition. 30-something years later, what would you say have been, I'll start with the challenges. The challenge for me has been trying to get um, to, to know this place um, and to really go out and, and meet Americans and meet them where they are uh, and not pass any judgment calls. Um, and uh, spend a lot of time in Texas, in Oklahoma, in sort of the conservative bed of the United States and, um, and, and learned a lot about, um, about value systems, about hard work, uh, uh, about being open, about being vulnerable and not allowing anybody to define your reality. You know, I, you know, and staying grounded on who you are and, and the values that came from you, how you were raised. Um, so that's, that's, that's the conflicting aspect of being in this country. Do you feel uh, still like an immigrant or do you feel actually that you are an American? Oh my gosh, I, I'm still an immigrant. I, um, <laughs> I, uh, my accent it tells, speaks it clearly. I, I've tried as much as possible to maintain that. Uh, people. Uh, people can pick that up really quick. You know, you meet them, you introduce yourself to them and say, you know, where, where are you from? And I tell them, well, I'm, I'm from Nigeria, and I, uh, but I've been here a while. Um, so that's, that, that's kept me uh, very grounded. Was that a dream to come to the United States? Oh, my gosh, the dream come true. You know, I, I, uh, I remember watching Sesame Street as a kid uh, and watching Big Bird and, and all these diverse characters on Sesame Street and how they all kind of find a way to get along with each other and, and live harmoniously in this, in this wonderful street. And I thought, man, you know, maybe that's what America is all about. Uh, and and you, when, you, when you come here, you find that, you know, it's, that's, that, is, that is an ideal, but it's an ideal that we're currently and constantly striving for. But, yeah, it is a dream that came true, you know. 
Well, you talked about uh, being grounded, trying to be grounded in also your culture. How do you do that? Do you get to go back home? Do, are you still in touch with some of your uh, extended family and uh, uh, close family as well? You know, for me, that's, that's a really good question because for me, being grounded is always going home. Uh, I try to go home at least every year, or sometimes multiple times a year. And when I go home, I go home. I mean, I'm there, I, I put on the outfits, I put on my hat, I, I, I slip into my flip flops and I'm I'm walking flip -flops. this. Yeah. I get flip flops everywhere. Oh, yeah, yeah, I go. That's the first thing I pack. You gotta have your flip flops, you know? And and, and so I, I would I would walk the neighborhood. I would seek out my friends, uh, the folks that I grew up with. And and when I'm there with them, I'm not I'm not the president of an institution. I'm that good old boy that um, we grew up together and we, we laughed together and um, and we 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 faced some challenges and overcame together. And, and every time I go home and I come back to the United States, I am rejuvenated. If I feel like I got a shot in the arm, you know, and uh, it, it, it gives me the kind of strength and courage to keep on keeping on. Well, before I let you go, I wanted to touch on two things. Nigeria has been amazing this year holding democratic elections and that made a lot of noise and not just Nigeria but other countries are emulating in Africa. We've seen a lot of positive uh, things happening. Africa is going through a very quiet revolution and it's not being done through guns and coups the time as we've seen in the past. It, it is a revolution of conscience. It is a revolution of accountability. Um, it's taking place in Nigeria. It's 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 taking place um, uh, all over all over the continent. But one thing is this: for the last 10, 20, 30 years, all we had was hope. But I, I hope that for the next 20 to 25 years, we'll have results, we'll have prosperity, we'll have transformation. Thank you. Well, we want to know what you think about Africa 54 and the stories we cover during the conversation on Facebook. And the address is Africa 54. Check out our headlines 24-7 on voaafrica.com. Find me on Twitter at VOA Vince McCory. Well, next on Africa 54, up-and-coming Kenyan performer Eid Aziz. Stay with us. news and notes. This is Living Better. It's not your usual sleep store. In Koreatown in Los Angeles, people can take a free nap up to two hours long on a massage bed at the Megun Western Shop. The beds combine heat and full body massage for an experience that users say helps heal their aching bodies. The pricey beds are for sale, but the socially conscious shop owners let people like Maria Williams use them as long as they want, with no obligation. They're very welcoming. The environment is just beautiful, calming, and like I said, it's healing. Los Angeles area chiropractor Aaron Schoenberger says the massage beds may provide more than just stress reduction. Massage is always nice because it um, helps move fluid, it gets movement in there, kind of relaxes the muscles. Schoenberger says that along with massage, there are three basics for healthy bodies, all free. Exercise, stretching, and good posture. I'm Martin Seacrest for VOA's Living Better. Welcome back. It's Music Makers Friday, and today we bring you a rising artist from Kenya, Eid Aziz. During a recent visit to Kenya, VOA's Music Time in Africa host Heather Maxwell met Eid in Nairobi to find out more about his music. Music for me, it's, uh, it's life. Music is everything for me.
<laughs> it's cool, Eid. <laughs> what rhythm is that? Uh -huh, I did uh, two different rhythms. I did a uh, chakacha rhythm and also I did uh, what we call singenya. When you were growing up in, in the village, was music used a lot in a lot of different contexts or just only specifically? Music was life in the village, or oh, music is still life in the village because we do everything using music. We walk, walk in, going to the, to the farm, singing, going to fetch water, singing, or dancing. So did you grow up uh, doing that just naturally? Yeah, I grew up doing that naturally, yeah. and uh, the elders there, they really helped me because they thought that I've got rhythm yeah. in my... They could give me drums when they were doing healing sessions, oh. and I could play with them. Oh, yeah. and you so liked it? I loved it. So ever since, have you been doing music your whole life? I've been doing music all my life, wow. since my dad also is a musician. Still. Oh. He's still there doing music. Percussionist? Yeah. You look to me like somebody who would do hip hop. Yeah, but you're, you sing, and suddenly it's like, whoa! But this is not hip hop at all. It's gorgeous. Yeah, many times people they confuse, they get confused when they see me. Actually, even when I go to stage, they always think, okay, we're gonna yeah. hear a lot of rap here. Yeah, and you're like, you know, I know you must work out at the gym too. Yeah, I do a bit, and also the drums helps me a bit too. Yeah, to keep in shape. Mm -hmm. Where else in the world have you lived for any length of time? Yeah, I've been uh, living in Germany for two years. I've been in Norway for 13 years. Oh! Yeah. I've do you speak Norwegian? I do. Wow! Can you say something, please? Just say, Heather, I really do speak Norwegian. Hi, mit mama i das is also jeg norsk. I love that. Nor Norwegian's a crazy language. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Really crazy and yeah, really hard language. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you should try to sing a song in Norwegian to this rhythm. Aha, uh -huh, maybe. Well, if you create That's yeah. really cool. Yeah. Well, I really look forward to hearing more from you. Yeah. And me too. I'm looking forward for the world to hear more of me. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Eid. Yeah. Eid Aziz, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> and welcome back to Kenya again. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Evan. And it's time now for a short break. Still to come on Africa 54, the sights and sounds of Christmas around the world. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Africa 54. Here's what's trending.
Well, worshippers gathered under Jerusalem's YMCA Tower to listen to a free open-air concert of bells performed on a carry-on, the only such musical instrument in the Middle East. As we've mentioned earlier, in Rome, Pope Francis led the world's 1.2 billion Roman Catholics into Christmas, urging those intoxicated by possessions and superficial appearances to return to the essential values of life. In Bangladesh, thousands of devoted Christians and Muslims uh, celebrated Christmas and Prophet Muhammad's birthday in Dakar and in Germany. As spring temperatures posed no challenge to Berlin's festive ice swimmers. Well, uh, next up, 2015 was a banner year in food trends. German engineering turned stir and taste into plug and play. This technology allows a person to draw a simple shape on a tablet computer, which is then whipped up into a treat with a special 3D printer. In Japan, Burger King is known for its colorful menu, and the fast food chain is showing off its latest creation. Uh, the Red Samurai range includes burgers that come with red-colored buns, cheese, and hot sauce. 2015 was a very good year uh, for one South Korean teenager who shot to internet fame by broadcasting himself eating dinner. 14 year old web star uh, BJ uh, Patu gorges on food as he chats before a live camera with hundreds, sometimes thousands of teenagers watching. His show is one of the most successful offerings on South Korea's Afriza TV and that is what is trending today. Well, and finally, what do, you, do comedian Amy Schumer and Paul Francis have in common? Well, they have both made po, uh, po, People's Magazine list of most intriguing people of 2015. The pontiff took America and Africa by storm this year. And Schumer, they say, she was not only winning Emmys for her show Inside Amy Schumer, her film Trainwreck was also a hit. The group of 25 also includes transgender TV personality Caitlyn Jenner, who was also named as a runner-up uh, for Time Magazine's Person of the Year, and of course Kim Kardashian. Now, for the first uh, time ever, a Malawian band has been nominated for a Grammy Award, and not just any band. This one is little-known music group in Zomba Maximum Security Prison. Its project, I Have No Everything Here, was recorded in prison in January and has been nominated for the Best World Music Album. Lamek Masina meets the group inside the prison and checks out a performance. <laughs> This band was formed in 2008, largely to entertain inmates at Zomba Maximum Prison. This was in addition to the Malaw Prison Brass Band. Acting Chief Commissioner of Prison, Lidu Dinizu Luntengamo, says the band came into being when he bumped into a group of musical young prisoners. When I visited the, the Zomba Central Prison, I saw some boys playing local made guitars from empty gallons or so ever and they could play music and once they start playing music there was an attraction of prisoners coming out from their cells to listen to this music and they, I said no let us improve this he proposed funding from the National AIDS Commission for the musicians to start composing songs about HIV awareness messages. They gave us 500,000, where we bought uh, three electrical guitars, a set of drums, and a very small uh, speakers. Oh, the guys were very happy. And we started composing a HIV AIDS rated awareness campaign music inside the prisons. This led to authorities giving the band additional funds to buy more musical instruments. A prison officer, Lines Kaunde, is the deputy leader of the band. She says the nomination was a surprise to everyone at the prison. We were not expecting it especially when this American man came to record our music. We were suspicious of his motive. We were not sure what he wanted to do with our music and where he wanted to take it. We only allowed him to record us because it was an instruction from authorities. 
Bandi member Ernest Kufandiko was sentenced in 2009 for theft. He says the nomination confirms that a prison is a reformatory center and not a dumping ground. And they should not expect that we will be leading our previous lifestyle once we are released. What they should know is that we have learned skills that once released, they will know that these young men have indeed changed. The 20 song album was recorded in 2013 by visiting American Grammy winning producer Ian Brenner, who later gave it international exposure. Prison authorities say the band will not attend the award ceremony in Los Angeles in February. Instead, they say a government representative may go on its behalf. But whoever represents them, the band members say they will win the award. Lamek Masina for VOA News, Zomba, Malawi. Well, Avro Coast is ending the year as Africa's top-ranked football team. In February, Avro Coast beat neighbor Ghana to lift the Africa Cup of Nations trophy. Viewer Sonny Young looks back on the Nations Cup triumph by the elephants of Avro Coast. Sporty greetings once again to our Africa 54 viewers. Here's a sunny side of sports salute to the elephants of Ivory Coast who lifted their second Africa Cup of Nations football trophy and first since 1992 with a dramatic 9-8 penalty kick shootout victory over Ghana in Bata, Equatorial Guinea. The Ghanaian and Ivory Coast fans saw 120 minutes of scoreless football before the shootout. The hero for Ivory Coast was goalkeeper Bubakar Berry, who we see in the blue, he converted the winning spot kick, setting off celebrations by his teammates. The French coach of Ivory Coast, Air Renard, also won the Nations Cup title in 2012 when he guided Zambia to the trophy. It was a disappointing loss for the Black Stars of Ghana. Star striker Asamoah John had this to say after the match. I think we, we had an edge in, um, to win today, but... That is football for you. Things happen in football, you know. So um, if we have no excuses now. It's, uh, we went to the penalty shootout and then we lost today. You know, um, I think they've went, they, they've gone to the final on two occasions and then they've lost. And then this year they, they came back again to win it. Once again, the winner of the 2015 Africa Cup of Nations football title, the Elephants of Ivory Coast. I'm VOA Sonny Young, and that's the sunny side of sports. And that's our show for today. Thanks for watching. Have a good night. Music is something that brings people together. Music educates, it motivates, it's a bridge. Music, Alley, on VOA. Kubana VOA, wahan kuso gudbinna kubana yal goz goz awo xi sabbadano kusabsan arrimaha Somalia, maraikanka iyo aalam kaba. Haddaba kubana ha VOA da kala soo uwa bseet ke na VOA somali.com. From VOA Learning English, this is the Technology Report. I'm Milar Sega. I'm the host of VOA's The Correspondence. A roundup of the world's top stories. Here's a false choice in more ways than one. We can't actually put you there, but we can come pretty close. In 30 minutes, we'll show you the world.